Welcome to our Monday. We'll be doing this for a while, the electronic worship, but it is good to be here uh, with you in your home by way of uh, the electronics, the internet. And when this started, I, I suggested that you stake out a place in your home where you can go to pray, go to be with the Lord. Uh, and perhaps you already had a spot at home where you did your morning devotions and that. Um, but as this goes on and on, it's all the more important to have a little bit of a retreat. And I would recommend that when it comes to watching these videos that you um, find a place where you can be to not be distracted. Or if you need to, um, go ahead and stop it and, and pick it back up. But we pray that it is a blessing for you as we as we worship together, uh, each in their own place. And we will begin our worship with a responsive reading of the, of the first reading, Isaiah 40. This is the day the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In light of God's faithfulness, God's goodness to us, his mercy, we may always rejoice, no matter the circumstances, because God and his eternity, this world will hinder us with. God's love is with us in good times and bad, and in sickness and in health. So gathered and united by our common faith in God, we receive hope without measure. Let us read this first reading responsibly, and together we will proclaim our trust in God's reign, a reading from the 40th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with verse 25. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Look up into the heavens, who created all the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great strength, not a single one was missing. O Jacob, how can you say, the Lord does not see our troubles? O Israel, how can you say, the Lord ignores our rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? that The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never goes weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. I'm weak and tired, and young men will fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. United by love from God, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, from where come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us with this commandment on our hearts and give us with your spirit the will to serve others following the example of your son jesus christ our savior and lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen Today's second reading, addressed to Timothy, recalls how God has called each of us through the faith of our parents 
the gift of God's Holy Spirit, and the power of God's love. A reading from the first chapter of 1 Timothy, beginning with the third verse. Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for the rem I remember your tears as we parted, and I will be filled with joy when we are together again. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know that same faith continues strong to you. This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. And don't be ashamed of me either, even though I'm in prison for him. With the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. For God saved us and called to us to live a holy life. He did this, not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time, to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. And now he has made all of this plain to us, by the appearing of Christ Jesus, our Savior. He broke the power of death and illuminated the way to life and immortality through the good news, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We're providing this uh, recorded worship opportunity, this online opportunity, that you might remain connected with the Lord and, and we with one another as a worshiping community, the family of, of St. Paul Lutheran. And I'll encourage you again to make it a habit of going to a specific place in your home that, that you've uh, given to the Lord, where, where you meet him in his word, where you pray. Um, and again, these recordings you can stop them, you can make some notes, I'd, I'd love your feedback, um, but particularly if there's something that strikes you on a regular Sunday, you can't you know, stop the pastor and, and make a note or you know think about a passage you want to go back to, and you have an opportunity with the recording to do that. So I encourage you to, to get the most out of this in the worship time, because this time in particular is, is not only our own families and communities, um, are experiencing a, a new uh, temporary, we pray, normal, uh, the whole nation is in the world. And so we need to draw the Lord around us to know that that strength, nothing can separate us from, but the love and the presence and the power of God, which is for us and not against us. So as we turn to the offering, we remember that all that was, all that is, and all that will be is by the hand of the Creator who made us and provides abundantly for us. We see God's generosity and the compassion and kindness that we give and receive from one another. And so we pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things that we may come to them. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And now, gospel acclamation. St. John, the 13th chapter. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave the world and return to his Father. 
he now showed his disciples the great extent of his love for them. It was time for supper. The devil had already entered Judas, enticing him, the son of Simon Iscariot, to carry out his plan to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, and wrapped a towel around his waist, and he poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel he had around him. When he came to Simon Peter, Peter said, Lord, why are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now why I'm doing it. Someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, if I do not wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter then exclaimed, Then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, A person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you are clean, but that isn't true for everyone here. For Jesus knew the one who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put his robe on again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? The one who sends them, you know these things. Now do them. It is the path of a blessing. Jesus said, the time has come for me, the son of man to enter into my glory and God will receive glory because of all that happens to me. And God will bring me into my glory very soon. Dear children, how brief are these moments before I must go away and leave you. Then you will search for me. You cannot come to me. Just as I told the Jewish leaders. So I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world you are my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Before Jesus completely emptied himself on the cross, he humbled himself there in the upper room with his disciples where he was the Lord and the teacher, the messenger. He humbled himself and he washed their feet. Here's something to ponder. Who would you let wash your feet? How difficult of an experience would that be? And whose feet would you not wash? or need God's help to wash. Jesus, there in this time, through that example, he gave them one of two gifts. The first gift that he gives in the upper room, which we always remember, is the Lord's Supper. I believe it was implicit for the, the Jewish audience that they knew that the Passover meal was a perpetual ordinance, or as the New Living Translation says, you must remember this day forever. And we will again celebrate the Lord's Supper. And we look forward to that day when the restrictions are lifted. In the meantime, we will sacrifice on account of love that we not be a part of spreading this illness, that we pray and pray will cease to afflict. Jesus gave is a vision for all circumstances, a vision of how to live with and for one another. Love one another as I have loved you, Jesus said. And he said, this is a commandment, 
a new commandment that I give you. I began Lent saying that faith drives out fear. How wonderful that would be, that if we just had enough faith, we would not be afraid. But the Lord convicted me, and I realized even Jesus was afraid. Particularly in the Garden of Gethsemane, we know Jesus, he, he sweat blood. He's praying, Father, if at all possible, take this cup from me. And then recognizing the Father's reign, the Father's supremacy, he said, but not my will, your will. Jesus being both human and God was subject to a personal will, just as you and I are, that sometimes interferes with the Father's will. <clears throat> Jesus was not only facing his own death, but John's Gospel reveals another concern deep in Jesus' heart. What if they aren't faithful? What if they stop believing when I'm no longer there with them? Jesus prayed to the Father about the disciples, about those who would carry on this mission, and he promised them the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, who would be their helper. And Lord, we need that helper, don't we, right now? We have the Holy Spirit. Help us to believe, and we have God's word being his promise and examples of his faithfulness. And we need that in this time, not only for ourselves, but we are witnesses to the rest of the world of the difference our faith makes. So Jesus gave them not only the Lord's Supper, taking the place of the Passover Seder, he also gave them a vision. A vision for how to live with one another. And right now, our vision of how the world should be, and that is all disrupted by this social distancing and not working. So many things, but if not for ourselves, for others. This vision, though, is a big request on God's part, that we should love one another, love our neighbors, love strangers, love our families as God loves us. It's a big ask. But it's good to know that we can't outgive God, that God will always be able to do more, but he helps us to do what he wills, what he asks of us. He is our help and our strength. Asking Jesus to be our help hour by hour to accompany us amidst our fears. We trust in that vision of love. That we are loved by God and God will use us to show his love to others, kindness and compassion and generosity, patience, patience. And with our lives, we proclaim that same hope and faith as the writer of Psalm 46 held to. So let us read responsibly Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength, always ready to help in times of trouble, so I will not, not fear, fear when earthquakes come and mountains tumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. When the river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. From the very break of day, God will protect us. The, the nations, nations are, are in chaos, and the kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God, God of Jacob is our fortress. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. 
He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Be still and know that I am God, says the Lord. The Lord will be honored by every nation. The Lord will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Thanks be to God. And now we'll sing. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Verse 1. saving that to last and thank you for your participation in our worship in this way and please feel free to share the links with others this link will remain active so you can search your email find it again and, and watch the service again um, if there's a question you have did pastor really say that or what does that mean and please join us for the good friday service Easter resurrection service and look for the good news in, in the midst of this pandemic there is good news drive-by birthday parties uh, people sharing people communicating um, look for and be a part of that good news God's love being shared in your community amongst family friends and neighbors and please send your offering here, Nancy Midoff, Post Office Box 71, Hamburg, Iowa, 51640. Now, go in peace. The Lord is.